Thank you so much for taking a minute to watch this video about using my multiplication intervention. Let's take a peek inside. This is recently updated. And so I just wanna show some of the new features, some of the newer things that we're doing or that we've added to this. Now, as you know, on the left-hand side of all of my interventions, it's the same day in and day out. The kids will do the same thing. So with this, it starts out as two digit by one digit. But after week 11 or on week 11, it'll jump to a three digit by one digit or a two digit by a two digit. So each set of 10 is really the same kind of problems on this left-handed side. My kids use their multiplication chart to solve the problems. You could certainly use things like um, partial products or you, know, you could use the area model, some of these other strategies to solve these problems. That is the same every single day of the week. And really the only thing that's going to change is when you hit that next set of 10 and maybe you add another digit, like three digit by one or two digit by two digits, that kind of thing. Otherwise, day in and day out, that left-hand side of the page will stay the same. On the right-hand side, it's going to be very similar every day, but there are a couple of things that are going to change. So every day you'll have a word problem in this spot where you might be working on addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division of various word problems. Again, kind of in their scope of what are they working on. We would never give them a three or four digit number if they hadn't worked on that yet. Then they'll work on reduce or finding equivalent fractions. Um, so you'll have various fractions here and they'll find something that is equivalent. They'll also work on area and perimeter every single day. Um, they'll always have one rectangle, which could be skinny, could be tall, and then one square. Input output is always something that is difficult for students if they haven't had time to practice it, but we wanna give them some opportunities to practice it with some simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division um, problems here or number patterns in that section. Then we'll work on conversion. So it always has a key saying, okay, 12 inches equals one foot or three feet equals one yard. And then use that information to complete simple conversions. Now that will be the same on all of the odd days. So this was day one. So day three is going to look exactly the same, only obviously different word problems, different fractions, different number patterns, that kind of thing. And the same for day five. However, the even number days will have some components that are different, really two components that are different. So they'll start with a word problem, area and perimeter isn't really gonna change, number pattern's not going to change. However, instead of fractions, we'll look at decimals because I feel it's important for kids to be able to answer problems like this. See, what does that decimal mean? Um, because really it's a simple concept if you've practiced it. If they've never seen this, they don't know what tens or ones happen to be. They don't know how to write that, but they can with practice. And the same with comparing larger numbers. We can do it when we practice it, but if we don't practice it, we don't even know what greater than or less than means. We don't know what equal to might mean, and so we just have to practice it. Again, on day four, the same thing. So those skills will rotate, some stay, they're staples every day, but then there are two that kind of swap back and forth so that kids can practice many things. 